Okay, today we're going to be looking at polygons and scale factors. And let's try to define what each one of those is. First of all, what is a polygon? Well, a polygon is nothing more than a shape that has multiple sides, okay? So poly means many, and I'm not sure about gons, but I know that a polygon is multiple-sided shape, okay? So we're going to also look at scale factors related to polygons. Before we get into it, let's talk about similar shapes, because that's ultimately what we're going to be studying today. Now remember, two shapes are similar if they look the same but have two different sizes. Okay, so for an example, and I'm, a, I'm, I'm terrible at drawing by the way, but let's say you have a car, a, uh, well actually let's just do two rectangles. Let's pretend this is your main size car, right? This is a regular sized car, a normal car that drives on the road. Let's say you wanted to make a scale model of that. Well, you would make it the same exact shape, right? Just smaller. So it would be a scale factor. In other words, you know, how much bigger is one than the other? Um, now, typically what we do is we use um, numbers for that. So in this particular lesson, we're actually going to be going from small to big. So let's say that your, your scale model, and this isn't going to be exactly right, but let's say that your scale car that you make is one-third the size of the original car. Then the way you would write that scale is one, then you use a colon, three. So the scale is one-third the size of the original. Uh, the uh, model car is one-third the size of the original. And that's what a scale factor really is. And that's one of the ways it's uh, practical, is making a model of something. Okay. Another way to make it relevant is by looking at maps. If you have a map, okay, uh, you might have something like this, okay, and it'll say one inch up here, and then depending on how much you zoom, maybe at one particular time, it might say five miles. So if one inch represents five miles, the way to write that, and you do want to put your units, is one inch colon five miles. Okay, so that's all the scale factor is, and we're going to look, take a look at some polygons and see what their scale factors are. So, right off the bat, we have two polygons right here. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit. Okay, and the question might be asking, you know, what is the scale factor of these two? These are actually tilted trapezoids. So we're going to follow some steps to solve this problem. Notice these are tilted the same way. This one's just smaller than this one. Sometimes they're not tilted the same way. We want to figure out how to solve those as well. Let's go ahead and take a look at the steps to solve this problem. First thing we're going to do is flip the shapes the same way. And like I said, for this particular example, they are already flipped the same way. They're pointed the same way, rotated the same way. So we're going to check step one off. Step two, we're going to divide the similar sides. So real quick, a lot of times I just like to look at the shorter side. Okay, Now, in this case, you could use 10 and 15, or you can use 6 and 9. Or sometimes look at the bigger side if you can. In this case, we can see that the small side of the smaller one is 6, and the smaller side of the bigger one is 9. And again, these are similar shapes, Okay, meaning they have the same shape, different size. So that leads us to the next step we're going to divide these similar sides. And I'm going to do it on this slide. And let's show what we're talking about. So what we're going to do is we're going to divide the smaller by the bigger. The directions will usually say smaller to bigger, or bigger to smaller. For our case, we're going to do smaller to bigger. So we're going to take this side 6 and divide by that side 9. It's going to give us a ratio because this one's say, 6 meters long, and this one's 9 meters long. If we divide the two, we will get a ratio. So we're just going to do 6 over 9. That's going to lead us to step 3 to simplify the fraction. So does anybody remember how to simplify 6 over 9? Well, you can divide the top and bottom of this fraction by the GCF, biggest number that goes into both evenly, which is 3, and you get 2 thirds. Now, this leads us to the final step of writing this as a ratio. So we want to move it from a fraction written in ratio. It is a ratio already. I guess we want to write it as a scale factor, right? Or in, in ratio form, meaning with a colon. So what you do is 
You take whatever's on top of your fraction, you write that first, so 2, then you write your colon, and then whatever's on the bottom of the fraction, right, right afterwards. So 2 to 3 is going to be our final answer. That's going to be our, our scale factor. 2 to 3. And so basically what that means is, for this particular tilted trapezoid, for every two units of this shape, this shape has three units. So it's you could do it as a percentage. This 3 divided by 2 would be 150% of this one. There's a lot of different ways to express it. This is how it's expressed as a ratio or a scale factor, rather. Okay, we're going to do both examples in the same video for this one. Now, what happens if you have two different shapes and one is tilted a different way than the other? How do we figure out the scale factor of that? Well, as you can see, uh, this one gives us two sides and this one gives us two. But just looking at it, we're kind of unsure about which one should be tilted which way. So that's why we're going to do that first step which is to, give me a second here, okay, um, is we need to flip the shapes the same way. Now, that being said, you can either flip, uh, let's go to the correct example, you can either flip the top one or you can flip the bottom one. It, it won't matter actually. You just want them to be oriented in the same way so that you can properly compare the shapes, okay? Thing is, you don't want to just divide these two eights, okay? because it's not tilted right, and certainly one's bigger than the other, so the ratio is not one to one. That's why you want to flip this one of these first to compare them. I usually just flip the, oh, the second one, I don't know why, or the one on the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and flip the one on the bottom. Give me one second. Okay, so if you flip the one on the bottom 180 degrees, okay, you will get this shape. And what you'll notice is the eight, when you flip it, will be up top, and the 10 will be down below. Okay, so now we have these shapes in the same orientation, okay? And we can see now these two shapes in the bottom, and I'm gonna outline them in, we will do pink. These two shapes on the bottom are the similar shapes, okay? Because they're the bottom of the shape, and each shape is oriented in the same exact way. Okay, so you have to flip them sometimes to compare them. So let's take a look at our next step. We were going to now divide the similar sides. We're going to divide those two sides that we just underlined in pink. And usually, like I said, you do the smaller divided by the bigger. Well, at least for this lesson. Sometimes you can do the bigger over the smaller, depending on what the directions say. But I'm just going to do 8 divided by 10 for that step. That will lead us to our next step, which is to simplify that fraction. The biggest thing that goes into both of them is actually just two. So that will lead us to four fifths. And remember to write that as a ratio. The top number is the first part of your ratio, four. Okay, and then the bottom number is the second part. So this is a four to five ratio. And this is our final answer. So basically that means more or less that the smaller uh, shape that we started with is four-fifths the bigger shape. Okay, For every four, uh, let's say, inches we have here, this one is five inches, no matter what. So that's it. I'm just going to do two examples for right now. It's on polygons and scale factors. If you have any questions about these steps that I've taught you or anything else about this lesson, let me know.